Okay, so I got my tricolor pasta boiling. I got my butter all melted. And then I got my vegetables all ready to go. My zucchini, my red peppers, my broccoli, my carrots, my purple carrots, mushrooms, and grape tomatoes. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do is add my carrots. I don't think I'm gonna use all the orange carrots because like I said, proportionately I had a lot of carrots. So I am going to just use a little mix. Look how, look, look how colorful that is already. Oh my God, oh my God, beautiful. All right, we're gonna let those go, cook for a minute and then add my peppers. Okay, so my pasta timer beeped and I'm gonna just test a couple of them real quick. Okay, so it's a little al dente, which is what you want because it's gonna cook more in the pan. So we shut this off and we're gonna strain it into a colander. Now we'll shake and because I messed up on the timing a little bit, timing is everything, I should have waited a little bit on this because now the pasta is ready before everything else. But that's fine. You can just put it back in the pot, cover it, it will stay warm. All right. These look good. All right. <clears throat> In a minute, I'm going to add our red peppers. Oh, you know what I need? Hold on. I forgot this. This is the best thing ever. My little food scraper. I know, it's so stupid, right? But it's, it just makes things quicker. Mm -hmm. right. Give everything a little toss. Let that sit for a minute. I'm gonna salt and pepper these. Just a little bit of salt. This comes out really fast. <laughs> a little bit of pepper. Okay. And I'll put a little adobo on there too. Just a little bit. This comes out really fast too, so. I mean, I suppose you could put it in your hand and then, you know, measure it that way so you're not overdoing it. All right, so we are gonna let these cook for a minute. Um, if you're getting a little impatient and you want them cooking faster, you could cover it. That would help them cook a little faster because it would steam and keep the heat enclosed. Okay, so I'm going to add my zucchini now peppers and the carrots have been in there for a little bit and it's starting to get soft which is good. Mix these around make sure they get underneath it all so they can get some heat. Okay. Starting to get some color in there and I'm gonna salt and pepper this a little more. Now there are two kinds of people, people who can bake and people who cook on the stove. Bakers have to measure everything, but if you're just cooking on the stove, you can kind of wing it and cook what you like, add as much as you like, omit things. Like if you're a baker, I don't think you can omit things like the baking powder or, you know, stuff like that. So, um, yeah. So. You put as much salt and pepper as you want. Okay, so the zucchini's been in there for a couple minutes, a minute or two. Um, I don't want to let it go too long because it will get soggy and see-through. So now it's time to put in our mushrooms. My big food scraper. I love this. Look at that. Okay. Give that a little stir. We are almost done, guys. Um, I'm cooking this on kind of medium low, by the way. Uh, again, don't cook everything on high, thinking it's going to go faster. You just burn stuff. Okay, look at that. All kinds of colors going on. Right. And I think I might 
cover this one. Let me get a cover for this, just so the mushrooms can cook a little faster. Okay, so I gave this a cover, so it'll cook a little bit faster, and I just had a thought I should stir my pasta a little bit, so it doesn't stick together. All right, you, now, I used to oil it, or you could even spray it with um, cooking spray, but I saw on a cooking show that, that you're not supposed to do that because then your sauce won't stick to your pasta, but we are putting it in butter, so if you put butter on it, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so before this gets too cooked, we're going to add the garlic. I used to put the garlic in with the butter, but then by the time it all cooked, it, the garlic cooked out. So, I'm going to show you how to cook, how to um, crush garlic without getting it all over your fingers. Alright, I'm going to crush it and cut off this flat part. Nice big clove of garlic. You see that? I take the knife flat. Alright, so it breaks a little bit. And then we're just going to cut this part. You can't do it this way. Right off, okay. and you should be able to just pinch the other side and look at that. Don't even touch it. All right now, this is one of my favorite things in the world: my garlic press. Okay, put this in flat side down. You could also, here, I'm gonna cut the other end off too, just because it's a little green. But flat side down here and have a knife ready in your other hand because you crush the garlic in here. Look at that. All that garlic's coming out. And then you kind of need your knife to kind of get it out of there. It's not all in one place. All right, mix it up a little bit. Get off the edges here. Oh, it smells so good. Everything's better with garlic. And then we put cheese on it. Oh my God, you get cheese and garlic, you can't go wrong. All right, I think cheese and garlic make everything better. All right, the mushrooms are getting a little color. I think it's time to put in. The broccoli. The broccoli takes two seconds. Okay. okay. And with the broccoli, I'm going to cover it because that will help it steam it. Then we want a nice, you want a nice bright, bright green for the broccoli. Hi. Um, if you overcook the broccoli, it's going to get kind of an olive green color and it's going to stink. You, you ever smell overcooked broccoli? It's gross. So we want a nice bright, bright green color. Oh, look at that. Nice and bright and green. That is the perfect color. Okay. You get, you get red, you get orange. You get, we're going to have yellow one for the pasta in. We're going to green. I'm going to put my tomatoes in. Again, last minute, they take a second, and it adds a nice little pop to it. Now, you have two things. This is a pretty big pan, and I'll usually put pasta in it, but then you're trying to stir it, and it overflows. I could just put it in the pot. I'm going to see how much pasta I have, actually, to deal with. Um, I think I have more pasta than I have vegetables. So I'm just going to add the pasta to the pan. <clears throat> all right. Pretty much right after you do the, the tomatoes because it's all going to cook for another few minutes. All right. Kind of do like enough to just get a layer on top because proportionately okay, it should be all pretty even. Start up. Make sure that stuff gets to the bottom. See what I mean about it almost overflowing? <clears throat> That's why usually I'll put it in the pot, but I felt like it was a real lot of pasta and then I just have 
way more pasta than I need. Okay, so we got everything cooking. It smells delicious. It smells like garlic. Now, we're going to salt and pepper this again. How colorful that is. I love it. This is one of my favorite dishes. Um, gonna put some more adobo in here. Do, 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 do. Just a little. Some oregano. Alright. And then it's looking like we don't have a whole lot of sauce left in here. You know what I'm saying? It's a little. Oop, man down. A little dry. So I'm gonna add a little more butter in here too. Make a little, make a little hole for that. Another scoop of, oop, that's a lot. A scoop of butter in there, or I can't believe it's not butter. Get that melted. Get everything coated. Oop, man down. See, it's overflowing. I should have put it in the pot. Wah, wah, wah. All right. So, now we're going to add a little white wine to this. Oh, my God. White wine. Woohoo! Cooking with Danny. Huh? Now, I, I like Pinot Grigio, so I'm just going to use what I like. Just give it a little circle. And the alcohol will cook out, but you can get a little flavor there. You can also add a little chicken stock if you wanted to loosen it up and have a little, uh, a little more sauce with this. Again, we're going to grill some chicken and we can add it to it. Let all the flavors kind of come together and then we'll plate it. Okay, I think we're done here. Look at that. All those colors. Bright green broccoli. Can you hear my dog drinking? <laughs> She's lapping up that water. All right. That smells nice. Now, the final touch. Cheese, grated cheese. I just got the cheap stuff this time, but usually we get a bag of cheese. But this has grated um, Parmesan and Romano. And I just cover it with cheese. If you're like lactose intolerant, you can skip that part, but just the garlic and cheese together. Is Marriage made in heaven. Look at that. And then really coat it because I, I mean, like I said, proportionately, I have a lot of food here. There is a lot of vegetables, a lot of pasta. If we add chicken to this, I mean, this is a hearty, hearty dish. Or it's a beautiful vegetarian dish right now. Covering it with cheese. That's for you, Jane. Jane loves the cheese. All right, I think we're ready to plate this, baby. I think I might have actually messed up the timing a little because notice the um, zucchini's almost a little see-through. That's a little overdone for my taste, but everything else I think it's, it looks good. Let's see if I can make sure I get everything. Zucchini, I got peppers. Even my broccoli. I like my broccoli. There we go. All right. And then I would normally serve this with some kind of butter bread or garlic toast. Okay, so I almost forgot. We're going to uh, garnish it with a little paprika. Just a little. I mean, this comes out really fast. There we go. Just for a little color. And then parsley makes it look fancy like a restaurant. Presentation is everything. All right, let's dig in. Let's see how this is. Mm. Mm. <laughs> no way I'm sharing this. This is so good. <clears throat> Again, you can make it with any any vegetables you want, but my three must-haves 
our broccoli and red pepper and carrots. Broccoli and red pepper is a really good combination, I found. Um, and then add whatever you want. All right, enjoy. Okay, so like I said, you can add chicken to this dish. We just had it as a vegetarian meal tonight, but I have grilled chicken. Um, if you don't have a grill, you can just take a chicken breast, cut it into small pieces, put it in a pan, salt and pepper, olive oil, both sides, five minutes, and some paprika for color, and put that aside, cover it with a plate, and then when you're putting in the tomatoes, I would put in the chicken too and stir it all up. Um, it'll already be cooked. Now, grilled chicken breast, I found out, cut it this way first. If we just did this on the grill. Um, and then I'm just gonna cut it into little pieces. Okay. And like I said, I like to cut them into bite-sized pieces so then you don't have to cut it when it's on your plate. You just pick it up and eat it, all right? All right. Um, okay, I got my food scraper. This, let's get it all there. Ah, let's get it all. And we're gonna just put it right into the pan. And mix that up. So next time, it's not vegetarian. Next time we have chicken pasta primavera. Okay. And I did say I messed up on the timing a little bit with the zucchini because it, it was a little overdone. I so I should have put the broccoli and the tomatoes in with a little sooner and that way that wouldn't cook so long and wouldn't have got so soggy but everything else was good the carrots were nice firmness the broccoli was nice it was delicious all right and then <clears throat> we're going to have leftovers we'll probably divide this into two maybe freeze one and then over here i still have all this pasta left over so guess what <laughs> we're gonna make sauce next episode I got all these beautiful tomatoes from Boston Organics. I'm gonna grind them up and I'm gonna make my own sauce. And who knows, maybe it will make meatballs. All right. So I hope you enjoyed your pasta primavera or your chicken pasta primavera, however you made it. And um, don't forget to subscribe. Next time, we'll make sauce.